When you look up on YouTube or other different social media platform for fantasy series recommendations, you would definitely see Brendan Sanderson, Robert Jordan, Robin Hobb, George R. R. Martin, or J. Christoph. We all love these authors because they are famous for a reason, but sometimes we do want to look for the alternatives, books that deserve more love. So here are my recommendations. Hi guys, this is Dan. Today let's talk about fantasy books or series that are underrated, or what would I say, deserve more love. Most of the books that I've picked today got less than 4,000 ratings on Goodreads, compared to, let's say, Trust of the Emerald Sea got over 100,000 ratings on Goodreads. So that is what I mean by underrated. Without further ado, let's talk about all these underrated fantasy series. The first one is the book that inspired me to do this video. It is The Judas Blossom by Stephen Iron, the first book of the Nintendo and the Falcon series. Can you believe this stunning book got less than 400 ratings on Goodreads? I mean, what the? This one is a historical fantasy that I recently finished. With the last couple of months when I started to read a little bit more, I find out that historical fantasy is a subgenre that I am really into, which is similar to the Radiant King series by Shelley Parker Chan, She Who Became the Sun and He Who Drowned the World, also set in the Yuan Dynasty. The ambition could go as far as to Europe or, like in this book, invading Persia or even Egypt. In this book, we're gonna follow four POVs. The first one is a very ambitious Mongolian Khan called Halaku, who wanted to make the race proud by expanding their territory and invading Persia. The second one is a Mongolian prince, Hulaku's son, who is called Tamuzin. He is a little bit overweight and people don't see him as fit as a Mongolian should be. One day he had to join the army and invade Persia. He accidentally discovered a mysterious, really powerful weapon that could upset the status quo. The third POV is a Mongolian princess called Koko Jin. She was married to Hulakus, yes it is Hulaku again, because of her family failed rebellion. She never forget this lesson and she would make them pay for it. Kafon was our last POV who was a leader of a Persian rebellion group. He accidentally became the general under Hulakus. Yes, Hulakus again and again. So that he could feed the information from the army of the empire to the rebellion group. In the very beginning of this book, the author has already stated that this book is based on history. Something that had really happened before, although he had to rearrange the events slightly so that they could fit to the plot. This made me, of course, with a pinch of salt to learn Persian history, something that I am totally unfamiliar with. There were quite a lot of happening in this period of time, not just for the rebels need to plan for their action, but also the Mongolians seems not as united as it looks like. There are also quite a lot of battles here. The writing of it makes you feel like you are standing in the middle of the battlefield. This was really vivid and how brutal, how bloody it was to the locals living there as well. Also, we're gonna see how the rebels work in the shadow of the spy network. What they were doing seems to be minor, not significant, but in a bigger picture, it got the domino effect to upset the Mongolian rule. Even though the events here are real, of course there are some fantasy elements like the weapon Tamuzin uncovered, and there are some mysteries about this group of people as well. The only downside of this story is the length of it. It is a bit on the shorter side, roughly 400 pages long. To me, it is like a prequel to introduce us what is going on over in Persia at that period of time, to set every piece on the chessboard for the future books. So if you're like me into historical fantasy, or you like to read about how the rebels overthrow an empire, The Judas Blossom is definitely a book for you. Also, the second book of the series are gonna be released in the summer, so I would say it is a good time to read it now. The next series I would like to recommend is for those who are into martial art. It is The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Ju the first book of the War Arts series. The book started with an interesting premise. What if the Chosen One is rubbish? In this book, we're gonna follow Jian, who was the Chosen One thinking he could defeat the enemy, the Eternal Count, without any difficulty. Seeing how unfit he was, Lin Tashi, a retired martial artist, decided to train him herself. At the same time, it seems that the prophecy has been fulfilled the Eternal Khan was dead. So without any more use, the states has decided to eliminate Jian, this chosen one. So Tashi and Jian has to start another journey. Jian was settled in a school to learn some more skills and most importantly, he needed to learn how to work with others because he was spoiled before. Tashi was a bit curious about the prophecy. 
what went wrong with it. Other than these two POVs, we also got Qi Sami, who was a leader of a bounty hunter group. Their group wanted to make a fortune by taking Jiang down. We also got Sari, who was from the same race as the Eternal Khan, tried to liberate her people under the Jews' rule, but also she was like a vessel for the restoration of the Eternal Khan. I really like the combat scenes in this book because they are just so lively. You can easily tell that the author has made a good use of his background as a stuntman, and also his passion of reading classic martial art novels. You can easily picture in your mind how these characters fight, what weapons are they using or what stance it is. There is a little bit of character growth by the end of the first book, so the characters are not flat. In the second book, the plot expands further with a little bit more of political interest. So if you are into fantasy that are full of combat scenes, fightings in general, I would say the War Us series is definitely for you. I just hope that we're gonna have some more news about the third book. I can't wait for it. Come on, this is solid. The next series, I don't think I have talked about it before. It is like Robin Hobb meeting the Radiant King series by Shelley Packer Chen. It is The Hand of the Sun King by J.T. Greyhouse, the first book of the Pact of the Pattern series. The reason I would say it is Robin Hobb-ish is because we're gonna follow the journey of one character, and that journey is emotional and heartbreaking. It is Radiant King-ish is because it is Asian-inspired. In the first book, we're gonna follow Wen as our main character and his family is a little bit special because his father always listened to the order from the empire, but his mother's side is actually from a rebellion group. One day he discovered the secrets of his mother's side and the special power behind it. With the family pressure to take the imperial exam, Wen hoped that one day he could become the hand of the empire and shape the world according to his will. So the first third of the book reads like he is preparing for the exam and uncovering the secrets of his family. The rest of the story is him climbing up the ladder and see what he can do with his new power. Because when this person, you can already tell, he is a little bit arrogant and may not notice the consequences of his actions. So his grandma called her foolish cur. Also, there may be a little bit more of the Empire's ambitions. I like the fact that we are always on the side of Wen and see him learn in a really hard way, to the point when he realized what is actually going on was a little bit heartbreaking and emotional. The more you know, the harder it takes, and I also like the companions with him on this journey. There are quite a lot of fantasy elements in this series, like firepower, wind power, or how this magic gonna work as a whole in general. There were battles with the use of these powers, and it was epic. In the second book, Wen tried to ratify the mistakes he had made and cleaning up the mess, there would be more battles and something bigger happened in the background. The ending of the second book is like... <sighs> I don't want to say too much, I don't want to spoil you, but I can't wait to find out how everything gonna wrap up, so the third book is already on my April's TBR. I have read two books of this series, and the only problem I had is I want some more time to let all the emotions to sink down, to brew a little bit longer, so that it could make a bigger, stronger emotional impact to my mind. Overall, if you are into the realm of the elderlings to follow the tragedy of a character, and you are looking for something similar, I would say this series is a decent choice. The next series I want you to read is a series that used to be underrated, but now it turns out to be a hype. And it is Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill, the first book of the Bound and the Broken series. I have just finished Of Darkness and Night, the second book of this series, and oh my god, it is much better than the first one. Back to the first book, we're gonna follow three boys, Kellen, Rist, and Dan. After the test, the proofing, they decided to have a night out. Since then, they have got themselves into so much troubles. With so much dangers, they can't simply return to their village. So with the new companions, they have to start a new journey. Their goal was to retreat to a city so that they could be safe from the Empire. Because they may have something unusual, something powerful, seems to be a threat to the Empire. On this journey, they will meet some new friends, new companions, and also some mythical creatures like elves, dwarves, giant, and the evil ones like Eurax or the Fate. Kellen's sister, Ella, is also a POV in this book. She also had to leave the village because of the romance with another character called 
read. The first book of Blood and Fire, I said that it is a little bit lack of originality. The personalities of our main characters, how the story unfolds, are like other classic epic fantasy series. But starting from the next one of Darkness and Night, things got a little bit complicated. The second book took place right after the first one. Since then, it had been always so exciting, so intense, so emotional, so heartbreaking. There are some twists to certain characters. And even though the next book is thick, you just don't want to put it down. Trust me. You would like to find out how these characters gonna go through all these difficulties. Will they be safe? You cared about them so much. Beside the main characters, we also got side characters from the first book as our POV to investigate the political movement underground, literally. Underground. We also have a new POV in the second book, which is about a rebellion attempt. Also, 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 this is very important. If you want to jump into the series because of my persuasion, I strongly suggest you to read the novella as well. Because starting from the second book, there are much more references to the events take place in the first novella, The Fall. And you may see those characters again. I am two books into this series, and the plot is definitely getting richer and more complicated. It is like I don't want to compare it this way, but it is like the wheel of time when our characters are set to do something. Usually, they won't be able to complete it in the same book. Rather, it is like they are having a new journey to see the world and meet some new friends. In the next two or three months, I hope that I could get myself up to date with this series because I think I only got one main book and two novellas left, so not far to go. I would strongly recommend this series to those who love epic fantasy series. If you're like me, finding the first book a little bit underwhelming, hold on because the second book will get better. So here is my little recommendation of underrated fantasy series. These are definitely the tip of the iceberg because there are for sure more to explore with this genre. So do let me know in the comment. Do you have any other suggestions of underrated fantasy series? Because I am keen to read some more hidden gems. So if you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like. If you don't want to miss any content from me, make sure you have subscribed to my channel. I will see you real soon. Goodbye.